Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Sam, I am an aspiring knitwear designer based in Dublin, Ireland. And you can find me almost everywhere looking for Irish farm art altogether, especially on Instagram and uh, of course if you are here you will find my designs on Ravelry as well. I've been into knitting for about two years now and uh, I kind of uh, dipped my toes into drafting my own knitting patterns and uh, selling my own patterns, coming up with my designs. And I have been watching tons and tons of uh, other designers uh, and knitters uh, podcasts so I thought it was about time for me to start this adventure and uh, share with this lovely community my endeavors into fiber art. And so here we go. Let's start with uh, the Finnish project. Or well, being the first episodes, they are basically the projects that I finished in the last year or so. So let's start with the jumper that I'm wearing. This is the Marius number no. 15 from uh, Sadness Garden. It's one of their classic patterns. It's a drop sleeve jumper, bottom up, and I needed this using JC Rennie Super Soft Wool that comes in this huge <laughs> giant cone. Um, it's a very dark and stark forest green and then the natural uh, white as well. It's uh, basically my last jumper if you don't take in account to what I'm working on pattern wise or design wise. And um, you will see uh, going through my finished projects so that I've knitted a lot of Marius's. I really love the pattern, it's really easy to follow, it's stranded color work, something that you will see, it's a common trend in my, all my designs, I really love stranded color work, and especially I love uh, sunness uh, patterns. For some sort of reasons they are extremely well fitted and uh, at least they fit my shape very well. And this jumper is absolutely beautiful and I really adore it. The particularity of uh, the yarn we must touch a little bit. This is uh, super soft British wool. It's not soft at all. It's really really scratchy and rough wool and when you knit it leaves on your hands um, some sort of oily feeling. I did some research and apparently the yarn is um, dipped or drenched in spinning oil. This to help and avail the spinning process as well. It's meant to be used on a knitting machine, so it's probably helpful for that as well. But I found it's a great yarn if you, like me, are a knitter on a budget. It's a really high quality, 100% British wool and uh, it costs about 18 uh, pounds sterling which is around 21 euro and for a 500 grams cone of yarn that is an amazing price i have used just a bit of this 500 grams cone for this entire jumper which means that i can make at least other two jumpers out of this cone i don't remember the metrage but this is a very fine four ply uh, yarn and uh, I found it works really beautifully with the color work as well. The definition of the stitches is just amazing. If I'm able I will put some cut through or some more focus images on this jumper so you can tell the stitching definition as well. I mentioned that it is a drop sleeve jumper, so basically you need the body, the pipe of the body, uh, using circular needles, and then you will need the color, shape, the decreases on the back. You will stitch the shoulder and then you will cut through the upper part of the jumper 
and with the sticking technique you attach the sleeves. The sleeves are knitted separately, again on circular needles or I use uh, double pointed needles because it's much easier for me or I'm more used to them. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's um, an amazing process. I was really intimidated about um, cutting through and slashing my beloved jumper and all the effort that I put on knitting the body and the uh, big pipe of the body, uh, but uh, it worked out uh, beautifully. And I'm not an expert knitter at all, but I found the work was really easy to follow. The pattern is very minimal, but really, really easy. And uh, yeah, here you have it, my latest finished jumper that I'm gonna wear forever and ever, all the time, because it's just really cozy. The wool is a bit scratchy, but that is probably myself uh, and uh, my skin is quite um, sensitive to wool. Always been, even when I was a kid, it was... Um, always a little bit of a challenge for me to wear wool, but I really want to get a lot of wear out of this. Going back in time, and the second work is this beautiful color work jumper. This is a raglan jumper from Arne and Carlos, and this is their Save the Children pattern. So, Basically, I believe they partnered with uh, Save the Children, the organization, and part of the money of the pattern will go to support their organization. I knitted this in Drops Alpaca, which is this gorgeous, lovely, fluffy yarn. It is 100% alpaca, uh, four ply, fingering weight, and is extremely, extremely soft. I don't know if you can tell, there is a little bit of a halo in the fiber as well. It isn't my favorite yarn when it comes to stitch definition and color work. I found it was really fiddly and it's really drapey, so the color work would probably disappear a little bit. It doesn't have the same definition of the JC Rennie yarn. But the positive side is that I understood that I love alpaca yarn so, so much. This is extremely warm, extremely fluffy, and doesn't sting at all. I would really build a massive blanket out of this yarn just because it's so beautiful and so soft. For this jumper I use eight balls of the main yarn and about four balls of the contrast color. They come in 50 grams uh, balls and um, it is really affordable as a yarn. I'm always talking about affordability as a yarn and you will see it is a trend here in my um, little studio blog. This because I am not uh, a professional uh, knitwear designer by any mean and I just started basically designing my uh, patterns and uh, dribbling a little bit into knitting. So for me spending 70, 80 euro or anyway a huge amount of money on yarn is a little bit of um, a scary situation. So I always try to find some bargains uh, for, for yarns. This jumper would have cost me around 40 euro altogether considering yarn and um, other materials. So it's a, a great bargain and uh, it turns out to be a lovely yarn. I know that um, watching other podcasts, there's a lot of uh, commentary around drops, uh, their ethical decisions and how they work their yarn or the information they give on the yarn and uh, even some bad behaviors around uh, crafters and uh, knitwear designers. But... Uh, the justification I want to give me uh, to purchasing so much of their yarn is, of course, first of all, the price. It's a really good price and it's uh, very often on sale in my local art shop. So 
for me is a no-brainer on that side. And as well, I'm trying to get more of um, local yarn. I don't really want to ship yarn from the UK or from mainland Europe. And I always try to support my local community when it comes to crafting and uh, my local craft shop or yarn shop holds stores a lot of uh, drops. They always have it available at a very good price, all the colors you want, all the type of fibers you want. So I made a conscious decision here to be mindful both of my finances and uh, to support my community. And it turns out that drops was the best way to go here. But uh, I wouldn't uh, discard the future possibility of getting some hand dyed yarn, for example, that I never used, uh, or some local yarn producer that I'm still not aware about, or some other yarns that are more expensive or more luxurious, but that will probably come in time. So here you have it, the Arne and Carlos uh, Save the Children Raglan sweater. A little bit about the sweater, this is a bottom-up sweater with um, a raglan decrease on all the sides and the sleeves are knitted right together with the body and the yoke. So a completely different construction from the Marius Genser's um, jumper. And I told you I am mad about Marius's, so here we go with my next Marius. This is uh, a giant, it probably won't fit the camera even, a giant jumper which is uh, knitted using Drops Charisma, 100% wool DK yarn. I have bad feelings against this yarn because it's extremely scratchy, even rougher than the JC Rennie Super Soft. I basically am not able to wear this on my skin without having, of course, a layer underneath. On the positive side, it's extremely soft. And again, it's extremely economical too. I recently bought a jumper quantity of um, Drops uh, Charisma for a euro 50, which turned out to be about 15 euro for the entire jumper and it's amazing, not even if you go to one of the main uh, street shops like H&M or Zara, you can get a jumper for 15 euro. Anyway, talking about the jumper here, I use around 14 balls all together between the main color and contrast colors. Again, that Marius um, pattern from Sadness Garn. In this case, you can tell, I don't know how to do this, but uh, it's the full pattern. So in my previous Marius, the pattern uh, was cropped to allocate the neck band and the sleeves. In this case, it's the full pattern all the way around. This is knitted bottom up um, with uh, the sleeves attached to the jumper and knitted together with a yoke. And the yoke is a classic boat shape uh, yoke with some short rows, the creases that are not present in the pattern, but I put them because I really like. Um, the traditional um, look of a jumper with uh, a little bit of uh, cleavage showing in the front. If I would uh, change something of this jumper is actually the short rows. As you can tell, this is the front of the jumper and this is at the back. The difference between the front of the back is massive in terms of red, which is not my favorite uh, color ever. So it's really flashy, kind of like a flag, if it doesn't make any sense. But um, yeah, I will probably change this and do the short rows in the main color and then change later with the color band for the red. 
but uh, all together is a very classic loop looking jumper is really cozy and uh, extremely heavy as well so it will be very good for my um, ski wear attire and before um, drifting into other type of jumpers here we go <laughs> we have my third marius jumper this is the marius number 50. Um, it's again very similar to the one I'm wearing, both in color combination and in structure. Uh, it's a drop sleeve jumper, work with the stick as this one is. The pattern crops a little bit lower than on this jumper, uh, but I really don't mind at all. I knitted this with, um, with drops fable or fable which is a 75% wool and 25% uh, nylon. This is their sock yard. Why did I need a jumper in sock yard? Uh, this because, I don't know if you can tell from the yarn itself, but it's really fluffy and it's really delicate as a yarn uh, too. So it's uh, not scratchy at all, is really cozy, really soft. And uh, I found that um, as a four-ply yarn goes, this is really, really nice for jumpers. Again, really economical. And it worked really well in terms of stitch definition and color work. So I chose that yarn, first of all, because I had it in stock for my sock knitting and my designs. And then, of course, because it's really friendly on my skin. So I really, really love it. I wash this with um, a wool wash uh, detergent type of thing that I got in my local art shop and I can't stop sniffing because it turned out smelling like uh, a sheep. In a good way, it smells really farmy, really sheepy, which I absolutely love. And uh, yeah, what else to say? Uh, the colorway is medium grey and um, pearl grey. Uh, together I think they look amazing. Again, I'm wearing this all of the time. The fit is absolutely perfect. I don't know how Sadness uh, does this, but uh, really they found a big fun on me and uh, yeah, I can knit their patterns uh, blindfolded and they always fit amazingly. I have two more jumpers to go. And this is another uh, design from Sadness. It is the Bluffiel cardigan. Um, it's uh, knitted in um, drops, charisma again. And uh, of course it's a cardigan. I don't know why on earth I decided to knit a cardigan but being um, the yarn a DK yarn was really really quick to knit up was a little bit of uh, a minefield to stick to cut the, um, the opening and uh, do the sticking and stick the sleeves as well as you can see it's a drop sleeve jumper with a beautiful uh, opening and a button band as well. So basically you need the pipe, the tube of the body and then you cut through the center, you pick up stitches all around the center and you need the button band. There are button holes and uh, of course my plastic very cheap button but they do the job they look actually very well on the cardigan itself for the inside i know that is really messy but i tried to follow one of uh, marina school's um, tutorial around sticking and reinforcing the sticking with a crochet hook i think that worked quite well it's still quite messy but uh, this was my first cardigan and actually my only cardigan as we stand. So I really hope that will improve going forward. I really wish I could make another cardigan because I find that I'm always using the cardigans that uh, I got from the shops 
and I really would like one for myself, made by myself, but I haven't found yet the right pattern. It's uh, really difficult to find a good pattern for me, as I mentioned. I'm knitting over and over Sunness Garden patterns. They fit well. I had some experiments with other designers' pattern, and that's very difficult for me to find the right fit. Although following gouges and the swatching and doing everything that the pattern says you should do, it's always difficult to get the right fit for some reason. So a cardigan is a lot of work and I really can't put myself into starting a cardigan knowing that uh, it probably won't fit or it needs a lot of work to be a good fit. But that will probably come. So. Here you have it, the blue feel or blau feel uh, cardigan from Sunness. And then we have the last one. This is the fisherman's jumper, fisherman sweater from Sunness as well. This is a raglan uh, sweater knitted from the bottom up, and of course, the sleeves are knitted together with the yoke. As you can tell, this is full-on color work with this lovely lice um, pattern. It's my very first full-on color work uh, for a jumper and I really, really love it. I think the look is very cool and very classic and uh, I'm wearing this all the time as well. Why did I decide to embark in this situation when knitting a full jumper in color work? Well, the Fisherman's Jumper is really popular, or it was really popular last year when The Crown came up and uh, the show on Netflix and Prince Philip was wearing one of these jumpers. So everybody in the knitting community, at least here in Ireland, were knitting the Fisherman's Sweater. I have found so many fisherman sweaters patterns, uh, but of course the sun has had one and uh, I couldn't uh, but choose them. The color work I found is very uh, nice and uh, really soft, it's not really out there and uh, yeah, it creates this amazing uh, pattern all together that is really beautiful. This is knitted once again using JC Rennie Super Soft, which was a big challenge. It is a four-ply yarn, so it's really thin, and the yarn tends to stick together extremely well, which is a good thing if you need that, but it's a terrible thing when it comes to color work, because I don't know how you knit, but I do knit both color work and plain stockinette uh, using the continental method, having the two yarns on the top of my fingers. Let me show you. So basically, if this was uh, a color work, I would keep my yarns like this on the top of the fingers and proceed with the knitting. The two yarns together will stick to each other and it's really difficult to get them to do what you want and to unravel all the sticking situation that uh, happens there. So this was a labor of love and uh, it took me really ages to knit all together, but I'm very, very pleased with that. Again, this cone is the same cone that, you, that I've used for this jumper and I still have more than half of uh, the cone. For a 500 grams cone, this probably took about 200 grams of wool. And uh, yeah, a great bargain. If you're looking for that type of uh, rough, rustic wool and uh, you want a very good stitch definition as well, I wouldn't be able to recommend it more. And we are done with the jumpers. Happy days! There was a lot here. Probably in my next episode there won't be that much because this was the labor of about my two years into knitting, so here you have it. Let's get into other stuff. And uh, we're talking about um, accessories here or small garments. 
So while I was knitting all those garments, on the back of my mind there was always this little voice saying, well, you definitely are passionate about knitting and you definitely should think about creating your own patterns. So looking into the patterns I wanted to make, uh, it appeared that I should have started with something really easy. So I did start with socks. And I ended up knitting a lot of socks and creating a lot of socks patterns. This, for example, is my first design and you can find this on uh, my Ravelry store, look for Irish Farm Art or the links are below in the description. These socks, as all my other socks, are cuff down socks. So starting from the cuff up here, knitting all the way down to the very toes. The pattern that I decided to use is a custom pattern that I made up basically and it tries inspiration from some stoneworks that you can find on the Palazzo dei Doji in Venice which is um, basically what it used to be the old Republic of Venice uh, government building. It has these beautiful rosettes made out of stones all the way through the palace and I wanted really to have um, them in my kind of design and the first design being dedicated to the city I'm from. So here you go, um, it's really easy to follow and really simple and you can memorize it really well. A word I need to spend on the heel I've experimented a lot with heels, knitting other people's pattern, but I always found that it was uh, really difficult to get a perfectly even heel and there uh, were all these holes everywhere in the heel. So I wanted to apply a good looking heel to a full color work sock and I came up using a German short row heel but inputting some adjustments that you can find in the pattern in order not to have any holes anywhere. So as you can see it's a really really even and it looks beautiful. I don't know if someone else has done this before. My knitting experience with sock pattern is quite extensive but really not that extensive. I can say for certain that I haven't seen this done by anybody, anybody else's. But um, yeah, I'm very, very proud in uh, this design and I'm really proud in my uh, newly uh, designed heel. This pattern has been a real challenge because, of course, drafting the pattern is just 1% of the work, knitting is the other 1%. And then I had to engage with um, test knitters and I had to engage with uh, tech editors, which was really a big learning curve for me. Uh, my tech editor was uh, really nice. She's a lovely lady that, as well, makes her own patterns and uh, she specialized in socks. And she gave me so much help in understanding my pattern gouges and uh, the general way to build a good, understandable, easy to follow pattern. And I'm really grateful for this piece of work that she helped me to do. When I approached uh, my tech editor, I was really open and saying, listen, this is my very first pattern. I probably have no idea what's going on and I probably have no idea on how to write a pattern. I just like what I've done and I wish you can help me. And she was really helpful, of course, and uh, she understood everything and uh, she walked me through every single step of the designing of a pattern and then correcting, of course, the terminology, language, spelling and stuff like that. So here yeah, you have it. You can find it on my rubbery store. The second pair of socks that uh, I knitted and the second pattern that I had is this one. This is called Palmanova, which is um, a city in northern Italy where I'm from, which is shaped like uh, a star. 
and you can see uh, now this oak blocker is pretty dreadful but you can see in the tough call work the little star that is um, <coughs> recalling somehow the star shape of the city of Palma Nova. Again, this is a full uh, color work. I used a, a regular um, heel flap and a heel turn for the heel, so nothing really uh, different here from any other pattern that you can find, but I think the selling point or the particularity of this pattern is actually the color work, stronger color work, and uh, I really, really love it. As you can see, on the bottom I tried to get this stripey type of effect. I'm really sorry this hasn't been blocked, so you can get a little bit of mismatch in the pattern. But uh, yeah, I'm very, very pleased with this pattern and how it turned out. It's quite um, bulky because of all the color works that goes around the sock. But uh, I feel like it's a really nice on your feet and uh, especially the pattern on the underfoot it's a really lovely and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a nice fit overall i think and then again i have a lot of patterns to talk about so you will mind and i really hope you don't mind uh, this is my third sock uh, again I use my German revised uh, no gap short row type of situation. This is not full on color work. The color work is only on the cuff. It's a cuff down as all my other sock patterns are and is inspired by a very old uh, pattern that uh, was on a jumper when I was a child. And um, I decided to call it Mugo which is the name of a pine tree, a very small pine tree that grows in the Dolomites, where I'm from. Uh, it's a, a really nice plant. You really can do everything with that plant, from wood to harvest the fruit and make jams or liqueurs or syrups uh, or just hang around the branches and the smell of that pine will fill your entire house. It's just an amazing little plant so I wanted to give it a little bit of credit and uh, it's a very easy color work. Uh, how can you get wrong here if you are a beginner color worker or if you want to dribble a little bit into the color work I think this pattern is for you. Um, the heel as well it's really easy to follow i tried to put as much instruction as i could on the pattern so that even a beginner can follow going on we have the old oak sock again a full color work sock so with my no gap german short roll um, heel knitted top down from the cuff down and again i have here all color work all around the sock let me show you the sole of the sock so on the sole we have a lovely oak leaf this pattern is inspired by an irish uh, legend uh, or an irish um, tale about the two kings, the oak king and the bay uh, tree king. And of course the oak tree during the winter was very sad because all these big fronts and uh, branches that uh, during the summer were covered with leaves uh, were actually dead and uh, skinny and it wasn't powerful as it was during the summer. While the bay tree was beautiful and green over the entire winter. So there was a big fight between the two kings for who would rule during the year. And eventually they came to an agreement that the oak tree will rule the kingdom during the summer while the bay tree will rule the kingdom during the winter. And I found this legend, this story very, very uh, nice and cozy and I decided to give it a little bit of credit with my socks. It's a really nice and fitting socks. The pattern is really beautiful and um, very easy to follow as well. So here you have it. And finally, the last 
pair of knitted socks. Again, a cuff down sock with uh, this time a heel flap and heel turn heel. And the design of the color work, both on the toes and on the cuff, is inspired by Connemara. Connemara is a region on the west side of Ireland and its particularity is the beautiful sky that I tried a little bit to recreate in my color work pattern. I'm really, really, really happy with this pattern. I find that it's probably my favorite overall for the simplicity, but as well the impact of the pattern too. So here you go, my latest design. You can find all my designs on my rubbery shop as well. I have to mention that for all these designs I decided to use an Italian uh, wool. This is um, calza socks from Adriafil. Why an Italian wool? Um, it's available in Ireland, so I got this from a local art supply shop. It is uh, a 75 wool and uh, 25 nylon, so it's very durable and resistant if you're using that for socks, but you could use this for a jumper as well, it's really soft. I wanted to support a little bit of Italian yarn uh, makers and uh, yarnmanship, as I've heard in other podcasts, because I find that uh, Italy used to have a very long tradition around knitting that is a little bit lost now. Um, fiber arts and fiber crafts were huge back in the days. In my country, I always seen my grandmother and my great grandmother and my mom as well knitting and crocheting and using a lot of fibers. And I feel like uh, nowadays um, a lot of uh, fiber companies in Italy are kind of uh, stepping down their fiber craft. It's very difficult for them to export fibers. It's really expensive, expensive, and they are competing with. Uh, other European manufacturers and uh, yeah I just wanted to get them a little bit of recognition just because of the massive long-standing tradition that uh, they have on their back so I couldn't recommend it more Adria Fiel Calza Socks. Talking about patterns um, that I've published here is my latest pattern it's a beautiful color work uh, hat made with uh, an original color work design that I came up with. And this comes from a very old, really, really ancient traditional pattern that you can find uh, everywhere in houses where I'm from in Italy. Uh, this pattern is present in curtains, tablecloth, tea towels, pyjamas, jumpers, literally everywhere. Uh, it's a traditional pattern, so it's not quite used anymore, and I don't think anybody have patented or can patent uh, the pattern because it's just an old thing that everybody has in their houses, and it's just quite cozy and really beautiful. I have it here in Ireland uh, on a few items, like a giant tablecloth that I use on my work desk and that makes me feel really at home and uh, really cozy as well. It's made out of hearts and flowers and it goes all around the hut. The particularity of this hut is the decreasing crown that I decided to do on four points to create a very good fit. The problem with uh, hats that I had is that I never could find a hat that really fitted me, ever. I always found very difficult to knit a hat that uh, I could use and that is probably due to, I don't know, um, gouge problems or hats that are too loose and I don't like loose hats so I found that this um, was the time for me to come up with my own and have something that I really can uh, take 
out and wear on a regular basis and this worked very well it's really fitting there is a lot of negative ease but I think this can be fitting both young or lady heads and then men heads it comes in two different sizes as well so yeah you have it it's on my rubbery store and just for comparison, I got a red one as well. I don't like it as much as the grey one, but uh, it's not too bad. I use for this two um, balls of um, Drops Charisma, which is, again, their DK yarn, 100% wool. It's very scratchy, but I don't mind this case because this goes on top of my head and the only scope they have is keeping me quite warm. So here you go. Another thing I want to mention is the ribbing. It's absolutely optional and you will see in the pattern. It's basically a long 12 cm 2 by 2 uh, ribbing that you can just uh, cut enough and uh, just need a 6 cm and it will fit you perfectly but I personally do like a little bit of uh, rip on my forehead so we are done with the finished works and the patterns uh, let's talk a little bit about the works in progress now so as works in progress, if you're following me around Instagram or my other YouTube channel, you've seen this, which is the pain of my life. This was born as um, the So Basic sweater by Maxim something, a rubbery. I will definitely put the link below in the description. That pattern was a top-down raglan sweater and probably due to my inexperience with top-down sweaters or some gouge problems I found that uh, after knitting basically the entire body and the sleeve it was huge and massive and I couldn't wear it at all. It's a really plain simple pattern and it would be really easily modifiable if you wish but I got really frustrated, so I unraveled everything and this is the result. I started again from the bottom up with the idea of creating my own pattern for a jumper. But, um, you know, you've seen my patterns, it's always about color work. So after a while I tried to get into some color works here it's extremely difficult. The yarn I'm using is Jameson's uh, um, Shetland yarn, 100% Shetland wool, which is really, really difficult to work in color work. I've seen brilliant results from other knitters, but I really can't get the thing to work together the way I knit color work, keeping the two yarns on one finger make them stick together so much that was impossible for me to work without changing my knitting technique or style. So I decided to unravel that little bit of color work that I've done and uh, to adjust the stitch count to follow again Maxim's pattern for the so basic raglan sweater, which I probably will. I will, though, knit it bottom up as I'm more familiar with that. I seriously don't want to unravel this again and end up on another of these situations because it's just really frustrating and annoying and the yarn is really difficult to knit. These tiny little James's spinnery balls are so beautiful, they are 25 grams, but they are so difficult to knit with, they are so harsh on my hands and I really can't get a hang of them. So I got a huge quantity of these little balls, I want to make something out of them and uh, yeah, hopefully this will turn out into a lovely, very yellow mimosa color jumper. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. 
And that is all I have. I do have another work in progress, but uh, that will be my first jumper pattern and I will share it with you probably next time because it's kind of, it's not a secret, but uh, I kind of uh, need to work on that a little bit more before being able to show it to you. Unfortunately, I don't have any acquisition, but I have a huge parcel coming from my local craft shop with a lot of yarn for my new design, as well for some other stuff that I kind of want to make. And yeah, that is it. I really hope you enjoy this um, little podcast. And if you have any suggestion or recommendations for me, how to get better at podcasting, for example, other than knitting, I would really welcome them. And I'll see you very soon. Have a good day. Bye.